I think most of you were here before, and the picture has not changed that much from our last monetary policy conference. Um, and therefore, again, even, in our, even our decision has, has not changed. Um, I would like to start with a decision that we have decided, the, the committee has decided to keep the, the repo rate at the same level, um, which is 6.5%. So the repo rate has not changed. And, and the justification for that is, is the same that we want to continue supporting economic, domestic economic activity. At the same time, we also want to maintain the one-on-one -on -one link between the Namibia dollar and the South African rent. So that's the underlying uh, reason for keeping the, the repo rate unchanged. As I said, the economic picture has not changed globally. Um, we have now received figures for the third quarter of 2019, which supports the, the picture that we have seen unfolding throughout the year, um, that global growth is, is slowing down. If you look at, if you look at the most advanced countries, um, growth has also slowed down in, in, in advanced countries, in, in most of those countries in the third quarter, um, particularly in the euro area and also in the UK, with an exception of the, of the US and Japan, where we have seen a small uptick in growth. But generally, the picture remains of a weaker growth in, uh, in, in advanced countries. The same picture is the same in, in, in emerging and developing countries. Um, we have also seen numbers for the third quarters um, with growth slowing down. Um, and for the whole year as a whole, um, advanced countries are expected to grow by about 1.7 from 2.3, as you can see, is a slowdown. And emerging and developing countries are also expected to um, slow to 3.9 from 4.5. Again, you can see a slowdown there. So the growth picture globally is not very strong. So if you add up 2019 as a whole, the projections, and these are still projections, the projections from the International Monetary Fund is that um, growth will hover around about 3% this year, 2019. Um, there is an expect expectation that um, by next year, 2020, although it's still early, early days, growth is expected to pick up to hover around about 3.4. So that's, that's really the picture in the, in the, global, in, 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 in the global economy. As I said, it has not changed that much. So that picture continues to, um, to be the same in, 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 the domestic, in the domestic economy. The indicators that we collect throughout the year, we now have indicators for, for the first 10 months of the year. Um, and the picture is the same, that growth in, in the Namibian economy remains weak um, on, the, on the account of Slow activity in, in the mining sector, particularly diamond. Agriculture, I don't have to say that. You know that already you can see and feel and touch it. Um, we, have, we are affected by, by one of the worst drought um, in, 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 the, in history. Um, and, and therefore, that has negatively impacted on, on our economic activities. Um, sectors such as construction, retail still continue to be, to be weak. For, the, for 2019 as a whole, we expect growth to be, as we have already said that in, in our July, July outlook, that growth is gonna be negative. Um, that's our projection in, in the region of 1.7 decline. So in other words, we expect a contraction in output um, in 2019. Going forward, we expect an uptick, hopefully supported by a benign global um, global environment, as we, as we said before, we expect the global environment to improve a little bit. Hopefully that will also give some support to, to the Namibian economy and we expect a small uptick in growth by 2020. Again, early days, we'll continue to um, monitor economic activities as we go along and, um, and, and hopefully the expectation that we have at the moment will be realized um, come 2020. That's on the growth side. If we come to inflation, inflation continues to be well contained, um, and the trend is downwards. 
Um, if we take the average for the last 10 months of the year or the first 10 months of this year, um, inflation is averaging around about 4%. Um, if I take the number for October, um, again, that declining trend is observed. October is standing at 3, um, while it was at 3.3 um, in September. As you can see, the trend in inflation is, go is going downwards. If we add up the, the average for, for this year, although the year is not over yet, we expect inflation to hover on about 3.8%. Uh, um, so as you can see, there's not much concern when it comes to, to inflationary developments. When it comes to domestic credit, um, remains more or less flat. Then figures for the, for the first 10 months of the year, growth in domestic credit is averaging around about 6.8% from 6.2 in the corresponding period of last year. Um, so if you can see, there's a small uptick. This uptick is coming from mainly from the business sectors, investing in sectors such as, um, as real estate, trade, and some financial services. Those are the sectors that are getting credit from, from, um, from the banks. Um, but in, when you look at individuals, individuals, in fact, there's a small decline in, in growth going to growth in credit going to individuals. So the picture has not changed that much. It's really growth remains quite flat when it comes to domestic credit, private sector domestic credit. International reserves may, remains more, more or less at the same level, remains healthy. Um, we have given you numbers there um, in, in the statement, expressed in terms of um, import cover, standing still in the region of um, 4.3 months of import cover, which we believe is still sufficient to, to support the pack between the Namibia dollar and, and the rent, South African rent, but also helping us to, to be able to comp to comply and meet our international obligations when you want foreign exchange, foreign exchange will be available. Um, so that remains sufficient and therefore it's not a cause of concern. We, in, in our August um, monetary policy conference, we also shared with you that um, we are reviewing the regulation that, that is applicable to um, secondary properties, what is called the loan to value ratio. In other words, the down payment or the deposit that you have to put down if you want to invest in a secondary property. Um, and secondary property is nothing, uh, anything other than your primary, primary residence. Um, we also inform you that we have reversed this to try and ease access to credit for, for people who want to invest in, in secondary, third or, or fourth properties with a view to help, you know, making credit easier and therefore hopefully stimulate investment in, uh, in housing and, 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 and the property sector in general. Um, we inform you that this regulation, the draft regulation will be sent to the Minister of Finance for gazetting. We now want to tell you that that has indeed happened. Um, the, the, that regulation was gazetted, I believe, on the 7th of, this, of, uh, of last month, or November and therefore is now effective. Those who want to invest in secondary properties, third properties, fourth, as long as you do it um, prudently, you, the terms of, of credit has, has, uh, have now been eased and therefore it's, you are no longer required to put down a huge deposit. Um, uh, for the second property, a 10% deposit will be required. And, and for anything subsequent from that, you will, you will have to put down a 20% deposit. Previously, it used to go up to 50% deposit, so that has now been eased. And therefore, we hope that it will stimulate investment in, um, in the property, property sector, and hopefully that will help to create employment, help to add to some impetus to economic growth um, in the property sector, but also have knock-on effects on, on the rest of the economy. So that's in summary what, um, what um, ha has informed the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee. And um, yeah, I thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you very much. The last time you explained that the main reason there is a <coughs> maintain the, the rate is to, to make sure that inflation is, is, main, uh, is at a, a very comfortable level. But as we have seen, as we have mentioned for the past 10, months inflation is really really 
is really, really okay. So basically, the motive now is just the peg mainly. I mean, to add to that one, on the loan to value ratio, the number of non-performing loan collectively for all the for all the banks, I think it exceeded your benchmark, isn't around 4.6 now. And now increasing or reducing the amount of deposit that they is now be able to, to be, I mean, which will accommodate people to borrow more. Can you just elaborate on that? How are you guys going to balance this? Are you going to tell the banks to whom to borrow? Because if you're looking at the household, they are the one who are indebted more, around 50 billion of the, of the commercial bank asset or mortgage, uh, on mortgage. So who is, are you going to tell them not to borrow more to the household? Or how, is, how are you guys going to balance the indebtedness and that? And again, uh, reducing that uh, loan to value ratio, we already know that the, the price of houses have been skyrocketing. Are we just not uh, putting it back again in the hands of the speculators? I don't know if this is monetary policy, but it, it, it definitely speaks to the economy. <coughs> More than once, Governor, you have uh, lamented uh, the fact that uh, uh, private sector is all reliant on government, and uh, 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 that's why also part of the reason why also the economy has, has gone down uh, from the point that uh, the case is going to be tightened by the finance minister. And uh, talking about private sector standing on its own, uh, we have seen NAMCO entering the regional, uh, regional sector. Uh, they opened their, their uh, 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 very first extension of the sector. I don't feel like government is again walking into territory that's supposed to be uh, for private sector. What, what's your opinion about that? And then maybe uh, the, the states that we get from South Africa, uh, the uh, contraction of 0.6% in the quota. Uh, are you concerned? Okay, let's let's um, let's start with Gabriel there. Um, the reason for keeping with the repo rate the same, inflation is is benign, it's behaving. Why are we not reducing interest rate? I think that's more or less what I'm reading in your question. Um, so, so it's only linked to maintaining the pack. In 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 fact. The objective is still the same, Gabriel. Um, yeah, I tried to explain last time that for us to be able to, to manage inflation, we need to maintain the pack. We need to keep the one-on-one -on -one link between the rent and the Nam Namibia dollar. Because if that, that, that link breaks down, it means we will no longer be able to import low inflation from South Africa. So we need to understand, understand from that perspective. The PEC is the instrument that will allow us to, to manage inflation better. Now, the, when we say is we, we, are, we are maintaining the PEC, we are actually saying that we are we're trying to keep um, our instrument intact to, so that we are able to achieve our, our inflation objectives. Now, it's also important to understand that for you to maintain the pack or then to, to reach that inflation objective, you should, you should be able to have interest rates that are aligned to South Africa. Because if interest rates are different, let's just for argument's sake um, decide or argue that we are, we, are going to, we, are, we are going to reduce interest rate, interest rate in Namibia while South Africa keeps the interest rate at the same level. You can see there will be a, a, a gap between, between Namibia's interest rate and um, in South Africa's interest rate. If interest rate is lower in Namibia, what you will expect to see is you expect to see people like you who have got your deposits with your banks taking your deposits to South Africa because there's no restriction between um, South Africa and Namibia. As far as exchange control is concerned, it's there like one country. So you can move your funds freely um, from here to South Africa because it becomes more attractive because you get better returns in South Africa. So you don't want to create that gap between South Africa and, and, uh, and Namibia's interest rate because it means funds will flow out. If, it, if funds flow out, you, it means um, you run out of reserves because you're not going to invest Namibia dollar there. You are going to invest South African rent. And South African rent is basically will come out of your reserves. Um, and, you, and therefore, when you run out of reserve, you no longer be able to maintain the one-on-one -on -one link between the Namibia dollar and, and, and the rent. So that's, that's how the system works. 
Um, and, and, and therefore, when we say we are, we are, man, we are maintaining the pack, it's practically to say this is, we are maintaining our system that will allow us to, to achieve our inflation objective. I hope I, I have explained that, that part. If you have a follow-up question, please let me know before I go on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the analyst that we talked to yesterday, so it's, mm. it's basically, even if we keep it here, looking at everybody is, is having, is sitting there, just looking and say what will happen with their hands in their pocket currently, no money is moving or no investment. So what is the point? Even if we keep it here and people are not investing. So, yeah, as you mentioned that the, the, the reserves are okay, or is your projection are just in the short run to say, then if, if it's in the long run to say that they are okay, then why don't we, uh, as you mentioned that yes, we can go down, but the point is, we make credit cheaper. As you already mentioned that yes, people can start buying houses as the value to, the loan to value ratio have went down. So now what is the point now, making, making it uh, loan to value cheaper and the people do not have uh, access to credit? The economy is not growing, so that is just now the the the, the two points that uh, I was I was looking at. Okay, mm. okay, okay. Now I'll I'll come to the loan to value ratio, um, but but safest to say before I come to to loan to value ratio, interest rate is covers everybody. Yeah, when we reduce interest rate, it means whether you're borrowing for a car, whether you're borrowing, whether it's your overdraft whether it's for a house, you know, interest rate will, be, will, will affect everybody the same way. While specific instruments like loan to value are actually targeting specific sectors. So that's the difference you have to make, yeah? So when you, when you, when you are just loan to value, you are just affecting those who are investing in properties, nothing else. Not in cars, not overdraft, not credit cards, that will remain the same. But let me come back to the interest rate. Uh, the, our view is that interest rate is historically low. Historically. Gabe, when I started working, the prime rate was in the region of 15%. Yeah, that was, you were probably, you were probably not born, I don't know whether you, whether you were born or whether you may be in, uh, before primary school. Yeah. Um, and then at one point, prime rate was at 25%. That was 1997. So if we compare where the prime rate and the repo is now, interest rate is not a problem. So therefore, who, those who want to invest, they can still get cheap money to invest. So interest rate is not really a problem to, to those who want to invest. I think, as, as I mentioned this last time, is, is that we as a country need to create more, more opportunities for those, those people who want to take advantage of those opportunities to invest in those opportunities. I think that's where the problem is. Where are the opportunities? How do we create these opportunities? How do we unlock these opportunities so that money can flow into there? The cost of money is not really the issue in, in our view. In Namibia, but also globally, because globally interest rate is very, very low. In, in some markets, in fact, in Europe, interest rate is negative. So this is not an a era of, of higher cost of capital, of high, higher cost of money. Credit is actually cheap globally, um, including in Namibia. So I don't think that that is a disincentive for people not to, not to invest. Let me now touch on loan to value. Um, yes, you are right. The non-performing loans ratio has, has increased. It's a concern. It's something that we are watching. Um, it's not out of the norm. When you have an economy which is contracting, you expect that. Uh, you expect the non-performing loans to, to increase because some people will lose jobs, some people will lose their incomes, and therefore they will no longer be able to pay, to pay back their loans. Um, when the economy improves, we also expect the economy to, or the, that situation to, to turn around. Um, but it's not, out of, it's not out, of, um, out of the norm. I have seen loan to value ratios that are, sorry, non-performing loan, loans that are, very, are much, much higher than 4%. We have, you're right, we have a, an internal benchmark which we, which we look at. And, and it's pra practically for us to start to have a conversation with the bank when we see you reaching that level and we say, okay, what are you going to do about it? Yeah? Um, so that we, are, we, can, we and the banks can proactively manage, manage that situation. And we have started doing that already in, in, in June, July. Um, 
So the comfort that I can give you is that yes, the NPL has um, NPL ratio has has gone 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 up, but banks are very proactively managing that, and they have enough capital, and therefore we, we believe that they will they will be able to um, manage the situ situation going forward, and, and therefore we don't expect this to have um, negative impact on on the stability of the financial sector. Now. When we say we are going to get, we are trying to encourage those who want to invest in properties to, to get loans. We're not saying that those who have borrowed up to the brim or up to the neck should go to the, to the banks. Of course, banks will not give you money because <coughs> when you go there, the banks will still have to do their credit assessments. Is Gabe's credit worthy so that I can give him a loan? So that assessment will still be done. Do you have the necessary, or do you meet the necessary requirements, including the deposit that you still have to put down? So it's for those who are credit worthy, that's one to invest, and investment is good, in property investment is in property, is, uh, it's something that we want to encourage. Um, investment in cars, yeah, it's, it's not a, it's, we don't believe it's an, it's an investment. That's why we are, that this, is, this measure is specific to this sector. And then therefore that's, that's a, the, the, the difference you have to make between general interest rates that will affect everybody and measures that are targeting specific sectors uh, because we believe that's where value can be created. Um, so credit worthy, credit worthy assessment is still important. We're not going to tell the banks, they already do that. Yeah? Okay, I think we have touched on, on, on your two questions now. Um, Kevin, with his difficult questions about Namcor, I don't really have much information about what Namcor is doing. But Kevin, you, you have, I, I was listening to your interview, was it two yesterday? You, you had somebody in, the, in your studio, you were asking him about this very th same thing. If, am I mistaken? Yeah, something like this. So you have enough information, so why are you asking me about that? <laughs> so don't ask me about, about Namcor. <laughs> you can call back your, the person who was talking about it, or, or, or maybe some, somebody from Namcor to come and talk about it. I, I have no, no idea what is happening in Amcor. But I think safe is to say, it's important that we, we build the private sector. Um, we work with the private sector because really only private sector can create jobs. Only private sector can create revenue for government because the revenue for come from government is coming from private sector. Those who are, who are paying corporate tax, those who are employing people who are paying pay, VAT, those are the these are the activities that is going to generate more, more revenue for government, for, for government to, you know, to deliver public services such as education, housing, um, uh, health services, because that's, that's government space. The space of creating jobs, in my view, is that is of the private sector, and therefore there has to be a strong partnership between the private sector and, and the public sector so that the public sector continues to do what it's, it's supposed to be doing, providing public goods, roads, health, education. That's the space of the public sector in my view. Private sector, creating businesses, creating jobs, and paying taxes to, to, to the public sector. That relationship needs to be much, to become much more stronger so that we can, we can um, um, develop the economy. And that's why you see um, us, together with the Minister of Finance, trying to assist the small businesses uh, with the funds that have been created. I, I believe you, you are aware that the Minister of Finance announced uh, a few weeks ago the creation of, sp of specific funds that are, are aimed at helping the small businesses. Um, that's a way of creating the private sector or supporting the private sector because hopefully one day some of these, um, some of these SMEs will become big corporates who are going to employ you know, a, a good number of people. But even, even the, if they remain small, they will employ five, ten people, that's good enough. If you have uh, 200 of these companies employing ten people, that's, that's, that, that is going to add um, to your employment numbers. So I think it's, that's, that's really, that should be the strategy going forward. But for the, for the specific on Namcor, on Namcor, I think you should uh, speak to, to the Namcor people and maybe call back your guest, the guest that you had in the, in, in the studio. Um, South Africa remains a, wa a worry, of course. Um, I, th I think I have mentioned before this before in the previous monetary policy conference that uh, if you look at commodity producers generally, they are, they are performing poorly compared to 
to non-commodity producers. And South Africa is one of them, it's just like us. There are specific, no, no, not, not only the fact that the, the commodity prices are low, but there are also specific unique factors that are unique to South Africa, just like we also have our unique problems here that we have to address. Um, but South Africa is, is um, a significant trading partners, partner, um, and, and therefore when we see poor growth, we, we, we get concerned, we get worried, because it, it affects us from different channels. One, we get tourists from South Africa, and therefore if income is not growing in South Africa, we'll probably get less tourists. Secondly, our revenue, um, a significant part of our government revenue comes from a customs union. And um, the revenue that flows into that customs union, part of it is because South Africans are importing things from outside. Um, and therefore, if income is not growing in South Africa, it also means that our customs revenue will be affected. So, yeah, that, that remains a concern. And we just hope that the, the efforts that are being undertaken to, to prop up growth, increase business confidence in South Africa, will yield fruits so that we can start to see growth um, increasing in, in South Africa, growth increasing in Namibia. So we definitely want to see something uh, better, uh, better growth, growth prospects there in South Africa. Uh, oh, Gab Gabriel, I think we have answered Gabriel's questions on uh, prices of houses. Okay, now, I, th I think Gabriel, as a young person, you should actually be happy that prices are actually adjusting downwards now, because it, it means affordability becomes becomes uh, you know it become you, you it becomes more affordable to afford a house so uh, from from where we stand um house prices were actually too elevated too high and and that became that that made housing very unaffordable um so when we see this adjustment downward adjustment um i think that's something that we welcome and i believe that um and if we continue to invest in the property sector, making more service land available for private sector to build houses for people like Gabriel, who will see housing becoming, becoming more affordable. In my view, that's actually the, the sustainable way of addressing the housing problem. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, now my last question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. As long as it does not go to the speculators because they don't build, they don't service until mm -hmm. supply, changes yeah. then things won't move. Yeah. My last question is this. Uh, you, 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 you said that uh, interest rate haven't been a problem for a while now. Things mm -hmm. are okay in terms of uh, accessing credit. Mm -hmm. It has been like that. Mm -hmm. So you, you keep saying that for your part is to maintain that. Mm -hmm. But what the analysts are saying out there is that, okay, what is the point of you guys maintaining what you maintain? but other policies are not talking to your policies. Because mm -hmm. what you're saying is now, mm -hmm. the rate are okay, inflation mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. You advise the government. Mm -hmm. Because we are saying here, yeah, uh, there are a lot of impediments that are there why mm -hmm. people aren't taking up opportunities. So what are you doing to make sure that also other policies that are being drafted are talking to your policies? To make sure that all those opportunities that exist or that are not being taken up, are being taken up. Because you're talking about over-regulation, utility costs, everything is going on. But you're saying you're maintaining your side. As an advisor to government, what are you doing to make sure that what you do is complemented from the other side of things, in terms of policy? Um, then, Stephen, um, Governor, it says all the policy, the monetary policy we've been pursuing, or everything that we are doing is to conform with the developments in South Africa. Now, my question is, what can we do? What venue do we have? Irrespective to grow the economy, irrespective of developments in South Africa. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to build up on, on, on Gabriel's question to you about uh, your role as, as advising government. Uh, remember that when, when you took the stance to cut the river rate a few months ago, it, it was also in response to the high panel of economic advisors. We, we, it's, it's been quiet on their side. Uh, they made so much of noise around the economic growth summit. And in terms of you know the synergy that you have with these guys when it comes to advising uh, around uh, turning around the economy, are, are you still in touch with them? Are they, are they, is there energy coming from them? Is there heat or it's cold that side? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Okay, uh, mine is just maybe clear. I want clarity from the governor. I mean, you seem to be projecting a rather tougher uh, environment going forward, and you also confirmed that it's presently really that easy in the last uh, quarter. I mean, I think if you go on the ground, you can see that small to medium scale enterprises are literally being squeezed out of um, business. <coughs> I mean, because of obviously government has been following in austerity, uh, implementing austerity measures. I mean, at what point maybe do you think you would want to see government at least loosening up at least to save um, the, 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 the SMEs and uh, the medium scale companies that mostly survive on from the procurement system? Okay. Let me just get clarity on your last question. When you say loosening up, you mean that, you know, there must be, they, they, there will be more tenders for the SMEs. And so that they I mean, like, yeah, maybe yeah. government spending a bit more, okay. so at least the small companies can survive. So, okay, let's start with Gabriel again. Um, advice that to government. Now, Gabriel, do you honestly want me to tell you wh what we advise government to do? Because if, 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 I, if I tell you you are going to publish it and... Uh, and government will stop listening to me. No, it will create confidence to <laughs> investors. <laughs> no, you are going to say, yeah, Bengal Namibia told government to do ABC, but government is not listening. That's what you're going to say. So, no, that, <laughs> that relationship is, it's, um, yeah, it, you, you don't always reveal what you advise other people, because otherwise you are going to, you are going to destroy the confidence that, um, that, Know the people that you're advising have in you, and therefore, and, and 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 therefore they will stop listening to you. But I think what is important to say is that yes, I think it, it it's I think all of all all of us Namibians, it's um, it's important to start looking or to continue deepening our conversation on what else needs to be done to revive the economy. Uh, I think that that discussion is important. Um, from our side, we, 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 we have continued um, talking to, to government. One particular area, for instance, is, a, um, is improving access to finance. Yeah? So some of those facilities that you have had the minister launching a few weeks ago are things that the bank has, of course, together with its with his partners, Minister of Finance, and and, and, and Development Bank um, have been working on for quite a number of years um, to try and improve the ease of access to credit for the SMEs because that has been the stumbling block. Um, and as you have heard from the Minister of Finance that we have identified a number of facilities because we, we don't believe that you, you only have one silver bullet which is going to solve the problem. You need to create an ecosystem that is going to be favorable to the SMEs. And, and that ecosystem, in our view, has got th three elements. One is SMEs don't have collateral. Yeah? Young people coming out of school, graduating, they don't have any assets to pledge as a security when you, when you go to the, to the bank. So as a result, we have created a, what is called a credit guarantee scheme, which was also launched in, um, by the minister. Um, and we have also made a contribution um, to that credit guarantee scheme. Um, part of it, you, you may have heard about it. Some of that we will announce as we go along. You will also hear about it, that we are making financial contribution to that scheme. Again, it's, it's a way of trying to support SMEs to, to get access to credit. Um, that way you can create more, help businesses to, more business to be established. These businesses should establish, I mean, uh, will identify opportunities, will, will uh, employ more people, and the economy will grow. So that's, that's one area of intervention. So that, that's part of one element of the ecosystem. There's, the second element of that ecosystem is, uh, um, is that SMEs don't only need loan money, they need long-term money. A loan has to be paid back immediately. If you go to the bank today and you sign on the dotted line, they will, they, will, they will tell you that after a month or so, you'll have to start paying. Now, some of the SMEs will take time to, for, for, for them to start generating positive cash flow. In other words, positive income that will enable them to, to pay back the loan. Now, loan funding is therefore not appropriate for some of those SMEs. 
So one of the, of the fund that, that we have proposed, and I, I believe the minister has also shared that with you, although it has not yet um, been established yet, it's in the process of being established, is what we call the Venture Capital Fund, um, which is going to provide not loan, but equity money. So in other words, they will become your, sh your core shareholder if you have a business. Um, and they will only get back their money once you start to make a profit, which is, which is different from a loan, which has to be paid immediately. Um, so that's, that's one. The, the, the third element of that ecosystem is SMEs also need mentoring. They need hand-holding hand because they don't know how to market their product. They don't know how to put together their, their business proposal. They don't know how to keep their books. Um, they don't know how, you know, how, how to procure legal services, you know, to, you know, to enter into contracts that are beneficial, beneficial to them. So all those services they, they, they need to support, especially at the beginning. Once they grow, they will be able to look after themselves. So again, um, the minister, I, I believe, has, has, has also talked to that, that they will, there is a fund that, that is going to be created to, again, help SMEs that are going to benefit from all these all these schemes to also have access to mentoring, that hand-holding until they are able to work on their own and they can become um, you know, thriving businesses. So that's part of the ecosystem that we're trying to create so that we can kickstart um, the vibrance of the SME sector with, with a view, bless you, with a view to create more economic activities in the economy so that this economy can grow. And I, I, I'm also partly addressing, addressing, addressing your, your, your question. Um, while I'm there, because um, you, are, you are two neighbors, let me also talk to your question about um, government spending. Um, yes, I, we, I agree with you that government must continue to invest, not consume, invest. Um, I think what we, when, we, when the minister has been talking about consolidation, what we have seen is that previously there was a lot, a lot of consumption, was a lot of government money going to consumption, which is not healthy for a long-term growth of the economy. So you can see that that's, that's temporary. Once the money dries up, that's gone, and you have got nothing to show. What is important is for government to put more money in capital expenditure. Yeah, you know, improve the railway that is going to create more opportunities in the economy um, so that we can become a logistical hub of the region, we'll get more money from the rest of the region, Namibia will thrive. The capital expenditure is important. Um, so if government, you know, reduce consumption expenditure, they will create space for government to put money in capital expenditure. Um, that will have long-term or positive impact on, on, uh, on, on growth um, long-term. So I think that's, that's, that's a balance that the minister will have to um, would have to keep reducing consumption expenditure, including the wage bill, because that's really the elephant in the room. Yeah, because more money has gone to the wage bill. Um, gradually reduce the wage bill, um, and and create more sp spending for capital expenditure. Um, land servicing, for instance, and you we worried about housing. Land servicing, for instance, supporting municipalities to service land so that you know the construction of housing can take place. That in itself can create a momentum for, for future economic growth. Um, but not just, you know, um, spending more money on capital expenditure on bill, I mean, oh, sorry, on, 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 on consumption expenditure, or even on some unproductive capital expenditure. And if you're building an office block, in my view, that's not a very productive asset. Um, because it's not going to give you revenue in the future. It does, it's not going to generate more economic activities in the future. So we need to you know, move away from that and spend money on more productive, more productive spending. And hopefully the, some of the businesses will then benefit from that, um, but they will benefit from something which is sustainable, not something which is temporary. I, I hope I have addressed the two neighbors there. Yeah, and I think I have also addressed the second question. What, what can we do to create economic activities? It's really, I, I talked about SMEs, which is a, a very important pillar. But more than that, it's is, is really to try and, and work with our private sector and identify where the opportunities are and agree between ourselves, which is government and the private sector, because that relationship, we need to make it stronger. I think in, in the past, 
um, there, there was a huge distance between the private sector and the government. I think we are now realizing that we actually need to get together. So that dialogue needs to become stronger, identify opportunities together. Private sector will say, we see these opportunities because they, they, that, that's, that's their forte, that's, 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 uh, that's their strength. Uh, they identify where the, where the opportunities are. They will then say, okay, this is what we think government should do. We need a road here. We need this kind of infrastructure here um, uh, for us to be, to be able to explore that opportunity. That way you can identify more opportunities. You can create more economic activities. That wa that, that's, way, that's why you can make the Namibian economy stronger and reduce a dependency on, on South Africa. Um, but it's something that, that will come from a stronger relationship between the private sector and the existing ones, but, but also even encouraging even more private sector from outside and from inside. The SMEs that we talked about um, will then help us to have a stronger private sector that can exploit these opportunities. I think the opportunities are there. The continent is opening up. We now, we now have a a free trade area that, that is um, opening up in the, in the, on the continent. I think these are all opportunities that we need to exploit, but it really needs a, a stronger relationship between the private sector and, uh, and, and government. I think the, the reason why, I believe the reason why the president established the, the high level on, e on the economy um, is, is to create that bridge between the private sector and government. Um, Kevin, you were saying they were very active, and now you don't hear them anymore. Maybe they are now busy rolling up their sleeves and doing all the dirty work again um, so that they can come with new, um, with, with, with new recommendations as to what needs to be done, what reforms need to be under, undertaken. Because you may recall that during the summit, there were a number of recommendations that were given to government. Governments, the government um, came back to, to give feedback as to what they are going to do on the base, on the base of, that, of those recommendations. The government is busy working. Um, implementing those recommendations. Some of them you have had already some announcements, especially in the area of visas. Um, some were with regard to laws that have to be changed. That is taking a bit of time, naturally so. Um, but I believe the high level is, is, is busy. We're fortunate that one of them is actually here. So she can actually play, she can talk for, <laughs> on behalf of her, of her colleagues. So I, yeah, but I know they are busy. Florida, is there anything to say on that one? Uh, um, as Governor has alluded to, uh, the panel is uh, actually busy doing the work uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and I'm sure that when you talk to the, to the chairperson of the panel, he will be able to then um, provide you with, with the details. Um, so for now, I think this is what is happening behind the scenes, that, that the panel is quite busy with, with, with the work. Very good. And, and, and Kevin, I, I think I, I missed that part where you said uh, the August cut was motivated by the... No, by, no, I didn't say it. I was uh, very much uh, uh, scared <laughs> to say it was motivated. Yeah, I think okay. it's just my assumption that it could be partly because, remember, when, yeah. uh, uh, around that time the, the high panel was also calling and pleading for the bank to make a cut. But, but I do understand that it was not really to say that you, you cut because they say it cut. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A again, I mean, um, different people will have different views on yeah. interest rates, and we, we hear it all the time. You know, even today, I had somebody who was saying we expect the Bank of to cut rates. Now, if we do our job by simply listening to those people out there who have got different views, um, we will probably be able to to deliver on our mandate pro appropriately. Um, we'll have to do take our decision based on a thorough assessment of the, of the developments, take decisions independently, irrespective of what uh, commentators, um, you know, experts out, out, out there are saying. Um, we, we do listen to them, but we, we don't get influenced by, by what they say. So whether the high level panel said so, we have heard what they said, but we, we have taken our decision independently. It, it was not influenced by, but by what they say, but what they said that time.